Hi, I'm Paul Germain, and welcome to another session of Smart Boating. If you've watched the show before, you know that we cover a wide variety of topics from in overboard to hurricane protection. And the general idea is to provide you with a little bit of information to help you make smarter decisions and have more fun in the water. And today's show is going to be right up that alley. We're going to be looking at marine coatings and adhesives and epoxies with a very knowledgeable guy. His name is Tucker Carter and he works for Pettit Paint and he covers Canada down to Cape Cod. Welcome, Tucker. Hi, Paul. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. Uh, we've got a really interesting subject here today. Uh, but before we get into it, can you share a little bit about your boating background and your background in plastics and coatings and that sort of thing? Of course. So I grew up on the water. Uh, I live up in Portland, Maine. My family runs a commercial business up there. Mm -hmm. I grew up boating from the age of 16 till now. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to UMass Lowell for plastics engineering and okay. found myself in the marine industry here working with you. Oh, wow. Okay. So you've got some nice background for this show. Yes. Yes. Great. Well, why don't we get right into it then? Sounds good. Okay. Well, Tucker, you know, this whole area of coatings and adhesives and epoxies is, is broad. <laughs> we can't cover everything, but we can cover, I think, some of the more important points that people can put to good use. And uh, we've got these directionally kind of these three families in terms of coatings and epoxies and adhesives. I thought maybe we could start off with epoxies. Can you help people understand, you know, what the different families are? Because they're used in new boat construction, used boat repairs, all over the place. But it's, it can get a little confusing what fits where. So can you help us understand the, the families and maybe show us some applications of the epoxies first? Yes, definitely. We've got quite a few different epoxies in front of us, uh, varying from just simple aesthetic repairs above the waterline all the way down to structural repairs and fairing compounds. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll start first with... The version we have called Easy Tex. It's okay. a Pettit's product similar to Marine Tex that you've yeah. probably used for many, many years. Yes. Both great products. Yeah. Uh, these are for emergency repairs or something that you might find when you're launching the boat for a, a snap for a cover. Yeah. Uh, you think, oh man, I really need to fix that immediately. Right. What do I do? Uh, grab some of this. It's really easy to use. It comes in four ounce packaging. Mm -hmm. um, you got bigger ones too for bigger repairs. Okay. However, the four ounce is usually just enough. All right. There's yeah. two parts, part A and part B. You yeah. mix them at a one to one ratio. All right. We're going to do that here in a second. Yes. Um, and you got about five to ten minutes of pot life, then you put it on the affected area, and you can either put the snap right in or wait for it to cure and then drill it and tap okay. it down the road. All right. We okay. also have this in a fast cure version for really immediate repairs, like I just mentioned, that mm. cures hard in about 15 minutes. Okay. So All right. super easy to keep in the tool bag there. All right, nice. We're going to demonstrate this now, Paul, if you mm -hmm. don't mind okay. holding that for me. All right. So as I'd mentioned, these are two parts. One is part A, one's part B. We're gonna do our best to balance this here. Yep. So just take equal parts of both. Okay. You just, you can see, I'll get in here with uh, my finger here for you. Okay. Doesn't have to be rocket science. Yes. One's white, the yep. other part is, is gray. Yeah. So you're just gonna put this on with a spatula. We'll get the other one going here. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be super precise, nope, just in the just, general just neighborhood. equal parts. Okay. The reason I'm showing you this here and that they're different colors is once they're both gray, that's when you're ready to go. I see. So you're just going to mix it up. It's a little bit easier than doing what you've traditionally had to do as far as like a golf ball to a dime size. We right. tried to simplify it for your guys' okay. end use. All right, all right. All you do is just knead it back and forth okay. on whatever your mixing tray is. Yeah. And depending on the temperature, it's a little cold today, so yes. it's a little bit firmer. Yeah. However, you can see it's already pretty much mixed together. It's yes. more of a grayish white now. Yes. There's nothing left over, okay. and you're ready to apply it onto whatever piece you're going to go. Oh, okay. It's pretty easy. And how long did you say the setup time was? So it's, it's going to set up to a full cure within a few hours, but it'll be hard to the touch in about 30 minutes. About 30 minutes, about so. a half hour. Okay. All right. So there, once you got it all mixed up, mm -hmm. we'll take it one of our shims here, yep. just as an example. Yes. This is your affected area. You just clean the area with thinner or alcohol, whatever you have, mix this up, slap it on. Okay. And then you can smooth it with either a scraper or a chisel like this yep. or a business card and yep. just get it flush as you need to. I see. All so, right. All that's right. all it is. A little overfill maybe and then a little sanding at the end. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sand it to perfection. Wow, that's nice. Yes. Very nice. So that's a, that's a very useful thing for people 
fixing things on their boat before launching it. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else in the epoxy family you want to talk to? Yes. Let me okay. change gloves here real quick. Yeah. So another epoxy we have, I'll talk about it first, mm -hmm. is our structural repair epoxy. Okay. This is flex epoxy. It's great for keel joints, um, anything below the waterline that Myers requires uh, long-term repair. So okay. if you're doing, you've, you've run up against the rocks, uh, you chip something when you go to the sandbar each year, this is great for those small divots into oh. the fiberglass okay. that you're going to fix up okay. or anything above the waterline. Uh, if you're dealing with joists or something like that, that needs to remain flexible, we really provide oh. a strong okay. bond. Okay, all right. So this also pairs well with our Easy Fair. Mm -hmm. uh, I just mentioned some below the waterline stuff, like yes. keel joints. Yes. Um, once you put this down, you're going to smooth it with either a scraper or a business card or a chisel, whatever you got. Yep. Um, let that cure, rough it up, and then you need to fair that so that way you can smooth the hull yes. and match the lines you right, got. Right, right, okay. Easy Fairs are fairing compound. They're yep. both two to one mixes with product. You can see some of these, the colors are different. Mm -hmm. um, they actually mm -hmm. have tips on the end that meter the rate that you need to, so no worries about mixing and matching. Okay. Um, they come with these mixing nozzles. Yeah. So if you've got little holes that you need to get into to the side um, for rub rails or something like that, mm -hmm. you can shoot the epoxy right oh, in. Nice. These guys are really great for any long-term repairs. If you have to do a rub rail, something like that, if you come into the dock too hot, really great products for that. Wow. We're gonna shoot this one real quick just so you can see. Yeah. It's our Flex Poxy product. Okay. Like I'd mentioned, I'm just going to squirt some out to show you the different colors. Hold it for you, or you got yeah. it? Yeah. All right. So, what you're going to see is one's purple and one's clear. Yeah. That's the two different parts. Yeah. Just like with the Easy Tex, we designed this so that way, when you're mixing them, you'll know when it's fully incorporated. Okay. And it's going to turn purple, is it? It's going to be like a gray. Oh, it's so gonna the go gray. Easy Tex okay. was a little white gray. Yes. This is just going to go gray. All right. And it's just a one one to one mix here, so okay. it mixes up pretty easily. Yeah. You can see. You wanna make sure you're using gloves. I took mine off over yeah. here, but yeah. Yeah. I'll do my best. So all right. just like the easy text and a couple flips, yeah. it's almost ready to go once you okay. see all that purple gone. Okay. And then it smooths out really easy. What I will say is get this as close to your final level or finish as you want yes, while you're okay. doing it. Yep. Because epoxy, just like anything, is a pain in the butt to sand. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. get as close to your final I see. film thickness as you want. So you okay. can see here we smoothed that pretty easily yes. in, very, in under a minute. Um, it yeah. works great for skim coating stuff. Uh, you, you can actually fill it as well too. You can do about two or three inches thick. I've tried just to push the limits yeah, of it. Yeah, right, right. It's not going to shrink um, or crack when you get it that thick. Okay. It'll cure quicker it might get a little warm but we've designed these so that way they're voc compliant um, and they don't shrink so when they get exothermic they'll release a lot of heat and pull back yep. this is going to keep that level that you you ah, you put I it see. at no matter what okay all right wow those are some neat neat tools now adhesives is kind of a i don't know a cousin i think of adhesives as a cousin to epoxies yes uh, what's what's the latest in that these days that people might find useful when they're making repairs yeah so we got quite a few adhesives available as well mm -hmm. uh we came out with three we got a red one a blue one and a gray one okay. so i like to simplify them yep um the red one is for anything above or below the water line mm -hmm. simply called premium fast dry it's okay. a fast cure uh for underwater lights through holes you're putting an outboard bracket on something like that okay uh, we've got a blue one that's above the waterline adhesive it's more for direct uv applications uh anything right. like stanchions deck yeah. hardware something like deck, that yeah. mm -hmm. we've also got a silicone replacement silicone's a dirty word in a boat yard these days oh, okay. people either love it or they hate it all right it's a pain in the butt to get off your hands and it doesn't it sticks to everything and paint doesn't stick to it ah, so we uh, created this one uh, that's a polyurethane blend that comes in clear and white okay. that can be painted so oh, it doesn't okay. stink it's okay. between these three they cover everything that a boat yard would need mm -hmm. um, we also just recently came out with the red one in squeeze tubes so oh, we've got okay. all three of these in cartridges and squeeze tubes now and white in all of them, clear in the gray, and then black in the red one. Yeah, so, so they're really good for bedding down various things on the boat. Like yes. Say, the cleats, the stanchions, the chocks, the, the windshield, the, everything. Everything. Yep. Anywhere yep. we design it so you could have a adhesive or epoxy for anywhere you need to do a structural pair on a boat. Yep. So what I'm going to do now here is show you this. Uh, 
common occurrence that happens whenever you're caulking or doing anything like that. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna put it right on my hand because right. whenever I do it, it goes everywhere. Okay. We're gonna do it on your hand. So yep. you see that's yep. a common occurrence. Yes. I'll do it on mine, no gloves. You'll okay. see this. You might go, oh, he's crazy. Right. <laughs> this one, your, your day's ruined at that point. Yeah, it could be. Right. So all you do here is you just wipe it off. I mean, I've done it a little more and really gotten in between the fingers and everything, okay. but this comes right off. So all right. If you did that with anything else, it would uh, yeah. disaster, <laughs> certainly be right? in your hair in a few minutes. So you can see that wipe right off. So yeah. we've designed these to really be easier for you guys um, and make it as beneficial and helpful for the boat owner. Good, so. good. That's excellent. Well, Tucker, you know, there's a variety of paints, a variety of applications, of course. And uh, one thing I find myself involved in is uh, painting and repainting a dinghy every spring. It's a little fiberglass dinghy. And I'm always a, a little bit you know, mystified, if that's the right word, with, okay, I've got different types of sandpaper I can use. I got 80, 100, 120. I got different types of paints. Mm -hmm. uh, any sort of guidelines you can share there in terms of if you're, like I say, redoing a little fiberglass dinghy every spring, is there a certain sandpaper you normally start with? And then can you share a little bit about the different paint choices you have and what might be appropriate? Yes, definitely. So the, the point you raised with sandpaper is a very, very large point of contention. <laughs> uh, everybody does it their own way. Yeah. Um, if you're doing something annually, I would recommend starting with something more in the immediate get, grit range. Okay. Uh, you like a 100 maybe? Yeah, so 100 or 120 to remove any loose flaky material, get yeah. back to a good substrate to begin with. Yeah. Uh, and then you could either prime from there or just sand the existing coating if it's in good shape right. with like a 180 or a 220 just right. to prep the surface. Trying to give us something, the paint something to bite into, right? Yes, yeah. and that also raises the next question of what paint do you use? <laughs> right. So right. It's something single season or annual basis, uh, more like a season or two would be like a single part polyurethane. Okay. Uh, it's gonna dry slowly, it'll take a few days to cure. Okay. But it's also going to give you full control over how you make your boat look every year and give you a lot more freedom with maintenance. Yes. Uh, Two-part paints or gel coats are what come on boats right from the factory. Yes. Uh, they last much longer, but they require more work. Mm -hmm. you got to wax them every year, anything like that. Okay. Um, okay. In your dinghy application, a good yeah. paint for that would be one of our single parts called Easy Poxy. Okay. Comes in a whole different array of colors. Uh, you'd use a brush, like a fine tip brush, to to just either roll that on or roll and tip, whatever you'd like. Okay. You could use a short nap roller, like some of the ones you have here. Yes. Um, you can go as low as you want, either to a foam roller. Those seem to work pretty well for me. They're, they're the right size to get. I cover some distance, but I'm not out of control. Exactly. I would always recommend going less, so that way you don't have to chase runs or build up too much and get cracking. Mm -hmm. um, so rolling and tipping is a method commonly found up here in, in more nor north in Maine. Okay, yeah. Um, it gives you a very good finish uh, consistently, as opposed to people who you know, aren't able to spray. So right. um, we were never had a spraying option before now. Uh, and recently we just got an aerosol version of the Easy Poxy, oh, yeah. which helps for small touch-up maintenance. Yes, I was thinking touch-up, um, yeah. If you hit the dock or small intricate areas like around the console, something like that, yes. they match all of the Easy Poxy colors we have, so you now oh. have got multiple options. Oh, the, that's nice. The big areas you can roll and tip, or the small areas for touch-up you can do aerosol. Okay, okay. And how about you, we're talking about aerosols, you know, historically, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Years ago, most boats were built out of wood, and there was a lot of mahogany and there yep. was a lot of varnishing. Yes. Since that time we've moved past that. Only the fanciest boats typically have a lot of exterior uh, woodwork. A lot of them have it interior. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's kind of a pain sometimes but but uh, the technology's changed and give you some different application alternatives these days, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So varnishing is certainly uh a dark art. <laughs> it's, yeah, um, right. Everybody does it differently. I never tell anybody how to varnish. Right. We've got some steps to make it easy for people who don't typically know how to do it. Yeah. Um, we've got a product called Captions Varnish, which has been around forever. That works yes. great. Right. Um, before you start any varnish product, you can see here on the left, we've got an unfinished, not sanded, uh, just fresh piece of wood here. Yep. On the right, you can see from there, it's a little bit more glossy, slightly darker brown. Mm -hmm. That's our sealing coat. Oh, so okay. we've got a product called Easy Wood Sealer, which is just a thin down version of this okay. that you put on for the first two coats All and right. you sand that smooth and build up from there. It's like a primer. Yeah. Exactly. So mm -hmm. this is the tricky part. Now you got to figure out how to put this on and make it look good. Yes. <laughs> yes. Takes a lot of time. Traditionally, yes. you do one coat at a day. Yes. Uh, roll, you either roll it on, um, or you brush it. A lot of people just use another horsehair brush like yeah, this. Nice brush. Yeah. Let it settle. Do it in colder temperatures, so it has a really good time to fully settle and cure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
but that's very labor intensive. You got to strain it. You don't want to shake the, the can. Right. You want to do everything just right to yes. make sure you can build up each layer. And that creates a really good finish. Okay. It'll break down very, very slow. Yes. But yes. it takes a while to get there. Okay. Along with the Easy Epoxy Aerosol, we also came out with Captain's Varnish in an aerosol can. Okay. So that's great for the novice applicator. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same product, just thinned down into an aerosol can. Right. It allows you to get a much smoother finish, and yes. it dries a little bit quicker. So you can okay. do a couple coats in a day, All as right. opposed to waiting a day, because you don't have to worry about brush strokes oh, messing up right? the finish. Okay, okay. So All what right. we're going to do here, Paul, is I'll ask you to shake that a little bit, and then try um, spraying some varnish on, so you can give a... Uh, Show. So if you spray right in the middle so you can see either side. Okay. Um, and you can see it's, it, it's, it's lays out a little bit smoother than you would right. with a... Should we point it a, towards the cameras there? With a brush. I'm going to spray it here as well too so you guys can okay. see. Okay. It goes on thin. It's almost like you would see with a ceiling coat. Yes. That's going to dry to the touch in about 30 minutes. Okay. If you wanted to push it and be a daredevil, you could wait about an hour and then overcoat again. Yeah. Um, I recommend playing around with it. For small stuff, it's really great so you don't have to tape it off. You don't have to worry about filtering for like the cup holders or like you mentioned interiors. Yes, yes, it's yes. great for that. Right. Um, steering wheels, fighting chairs, anything for, like that, it really is a game changer. Yeah, this is really nice. When you're done with it, what I'm going to recommend is this is... For all of you guys out there, this is also Spray Can 101. Anytime mm -hmm. you use it, just flip it over. Okay. And clear the tube until you see just solvent come out like that. Okay. And then cap it, and you're good to go till next time. Really? Okay. So then you don't have to worry about sealing the rubber gasket, waiting for anything in the tube to potentially clog, and mm -hmm. make sure it's clean and ready to go till the next time you're going to use it. Mm -hmm. Good points. Good points. Hey, this is another, you know, you go to a boat show today, and all the boats are like, covered in acres of upholstery. Just it's yes. become more and more, the wood's gone away and the upholstery's come in. And so there's the need to renew and refresh that upholstery and there's been some developments in that, right? Yes. So we, new boats, pontoon boats, all that, they all have upholstery. Yep. Um, and they all start to tend to look like this. Old, yes. faded, yes. Right. Um, right. not as fresh as they once were. Yep. Uh, there are some options out there that have been around for a while that kind of get you by, but it always looks like you painted something. Right. So. The key factor is finding something that one sticks and doesn't look like you painted it. Mm -hmm. um, I've done a couple of test patches here. Okay. This is our product called Easy Fabric Coat. Yep. Uh, you can see this is what the cushion should have looked like from original. the factory. Yep, yep. This is original. So this is just yes. two coats of each product. We okay. got the black over here, white over here. And what I'd ask you to do, Paul, is just really manhandle this thing. Bend oh, it around okay. and Bend just... It? Yeah. <laughs> So All the right. difference between these products is it's actually going to stick. It's not going to come off. It's not going to yes. flake. You could take a knife to that and you'd cut the, the fabric before you would the paint off. Okay. So it really gives you a good option to give these cushions new life as opposed right. to getting costly, expensive upholstery repairs. Right. And it's easy to put on, right? We've got a can of it here. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to ask you to spray the khaki one we got just so you can show people. Oh, what right, it. right, right. Yep, yep. And I'm going to aim for the center here because we've got a little breeze today. We get that. Can we show up to? Okay, so we got a brown, a brown coat here. Okay. Yep. So you can now change the color if you want to with these. So if you decide you don't like the white or you don't like the black, you can change whatever color you want. Uh -huh. These are the cans. They all have little colors right here in the bottom. I see. Um, this is also going to be dry to touch in about 30 minutes. Oh, okay. And you could do two or three coats in about an hour. Yep. And that'll be enough to last you a couple seasons. Wow. Surface prep, all you have to do is degrease and, and, and rinse, let it dry, and you're good to go. Easy. You could use something like this, like a brushing thinner or anything like that, just to clean the surface. Okay. But you don't have to go any further than just Dawn dish soap and water. All right. So I could allocate a morning to get some of the major cushions done on my boat and start yes. at 9, be done at 12. Today. Yep. A couple cans of this should do your boat. Yeah. So. Excellent. Well, Tucker, you know, one of the things I think is interesting about paints and coatings, that sort of thing, is, is how they've been able to come up with ones that adhere to all sorts of surfaces, including underwater metals. And, and that's particularly important to me because I run an IO on my boat. Mm -hmm. And so the drive and the prop are always submerged. I can't kick right. it out like an outboard. Right. And about, oh, I don't know, typically about August in the season, the performance of the boat just drops way off. And I, I have to pull the boat to a ramp, pull the prop off, scrape the colony of barnacles that are yeah, on yeah. there off. And then the boat's performance comes right back up. <laughs> now they've got some new paint and, and I've used one last year, just last year. And it worked great. Can yep. you tell people a little bit about what's going on there? Of course, yeah. So uh, painting underwater metals is always a challenge. One, to get it to stick. Two, to get it perf to perform. Yeah. Um, 
it's a delicate balance of putting too much paint on the prop and creating it uh, drag, right. like you ran into, um, and getting to make enough on there to make sure it performs. Um, I got a demo prop here mm -hmm. that we're gonna use, um, okay. just to show you. A lot of IOs, like you'd mentioned, this is a Mark Cruiser IO, have either three blade or four blade props. Yeah. Um, Typically, after about 10, 15 years of service, they start to look like this. Yes. The enamel coating is worn off. Yes. Uh, from here, you want to make sure you cover that metal. If you don't, uh, it's going to create some issues with galvanic corrosion. Right. Uh, that's what the anodes on the, the lower units and all that yes. are there to help yes. prevent. Yes. Um, we've got a couple products, like the gray one you're holding, yep. which is just a zinc product. It's 93% zinc that oh, basically okay. act like an anode. Yes. So they're going to oh, help protect okay. the metal. And, I see. It's a foul release, so it doesn't stop growth, it inhibits it from attaching, oh, just because it's okay. so slippery. I see what you're saying. So yeah. as you move the boat, it'll slowly wear away and also wear off any types of barnacles that are trying to stick. Interesting. That also acts like a primer for some of our other new products you'd mentioned. Yeah. We've got one here that's completely copper free, so it's okay. safe to go over aluminum. Okay. The, the two different routes would be if you have a brand new outdrive um, and you still have the enamel coating on, you could rough it up and then paint with this directly. Right, right. If you've got bare metal, you want to put some type of metal primer on there to begin with. All right. So what I'm going to ask you to do is just spray this first coat um, just to kind of demonstrate the second yeah. coat you do for the primer. Yeah. Ideally you do two coats of the primer followed by two thin coats of the top coat. Okay, all right. Let's squirt it in there a little bit. And that would be perfect for just this side, then you'd have to flip it over and do each yeah. blade accordingly. Yeah. Probably take you about five to 10 minutes to do the whole thing. Oh. Let it sit for about an hour or two and then come back. Um, wait a day for this gray to, to kick off if you're gonna overcoat it, just mm -hmm. to make sure there's no solvent entrapped. Okay. And then from there, you can either brush on some of the copper-free bottom paints in the quartz, yep. or you can spray. Personally, I prefer the spray just because yeah, it too. gets a smoother finish. Yes. Um, but that would be the ideal method to prevent both hard and soft growth. Okay, great. That's a great, great uh, development in the, in the field. How about uh, when we look on the broader boat picture uh, around here, you need anti-fouling point. You right. Need, you go in a marine store, there's like a, it's a, it's an alley full of them. The shelves yeah. are packed with them. Yeah, yeah. Are there some just broad general categories and have there been any new developments that people should be aware of? Yes, definitely. So uh, it's like walking into a candy store. <laughs> you got to pick whatever <laughs> brand you, you like at that time. <laughs> yeah. um, I've simplified it a little bit. We've got water-based paints, solvent-based paints. Um, those are the two main categories from there. They break down into hard and softer paints. Okay. The ones that we have that are water-based and softer ablatives are Hydrocoat. It's a traditional product. It's been around 25 years this year. Oh, um, okay. The, the biocide to kill barnacles and that is copper. Yeah. Um, yeah. Traditionally, copper has worked very well to stop just hard growth. Yes. So if you're just looking for hard growth and water-based, Hydrocoat would probably be a simple solution to go over whatever you have. Okay. The copper-free, which is what you'd mentioned you use. Yes. Um, it's a little bit better for the environment. Also yeah. for aluminum holes, there's no issue there. Right. That would be Hydrocoat Eco. Oh, so okay. Eco kind of denominates any of our copper-free. So there's no... Uh, copper in the Eco products, they have two biocides to stop hard and soft growth. So that would help be a performance upgrade from there. Okay. Um, there are a whole other like 12 yeah, right. <laughs> ablatives in our line that I won't go further Auto into. Stuff. Yeah, you can the, investigate. The newest developments we have are with in the solvent base line. Oh, so okay. they're triple biocides. So if anybody who goes from uh, all the way south to north for yep. snowboarding or yep. something like that, it's yep. a very aggressive bottom paint in both ablative, which wear away like a bar of soap. Yeah or hard paints for boats that stay in the water year round okay. to prevent the most amount of anti-fouling possible. Okay. So that, that is our Trinidad XSR okay. and our Odyssey Triton. Yeah. Um, they both have the same biocide package in there that just changes depending on what you want to use your boat for. I see. If you haul out seasonally, I'd recommend an ablative of some sort just so that way the coating stays open. Yeah. And if there's any paint on the boat when you put it in the spring, yeah. it'll wear away and expose more active biocide to, to work again. If you yeah. use a hard paint, uh, generally, you want your boat to only come out for a couple weeks at a time just to oh, service it and right, put it back in. Right, right, right. Okay, so we, we picked the right paint. And yep. then uh, any tips on uh, preparation or application? You know, in other words, um, do certain grits of sandpaper work better than others? Or uh, is, is uh, using a, a sander like this, an orbital sander, give you a distinct advantage over a palm sander or doing it by hand? Or any, any tips that you've seen out there in the field? 
Definitely. So I would say just for seasonal application, um, I'd use a palm sander or one of those uh, carpenter drywall grates yeah. just to try to remove any loose um, flaking paint or anything that's just built up and it needs to come off. Mm -hmm. uh, level the surface and then use 80 grit is 80. my recommendation. Okay. That's kind of my house sandpaper that I use for yeah. really roughing up the surface and putting a good tooth in there for the okay. next layer. Yeah. Um, then you could wipe it down with a solvent. Ours is 120 brushing thinner, isopropyl alcohol, mineral spirits, xylene, anything like that'll work. Mm -hmm. Just to remove the sanding contaminants okay. and then you'd roll on the new coat. Now you gotta be careful with the nap of the brush, of the roller you get, right? Yes. So some of these new paints, they don't need a lot of heavy application, right? Yes, traditionally you wanted to get the biggest roller you could and put as much paint on because it was all gonna fall off at right. some point. Yeah. Uh, now the one you have here is the 316 snap roller. Yes. On our water-based paints, they'll say exactly what, what nap roller you need to use. Mm -hmm. 316 will give you a thinner coat. It'll ensure there's enough product on the boat to work for the season that you're gonna do it with. Right. Um, it also doesn't load up too much because you wanna limit how much paint you put on the boat. That way you're not spending thousands of dollars getting it blasted off and going back down to gel coat or or fiberglass. Right, so. right, right, right. A couple of quick questions on maintenance. During the summer, if I wash the hull of the boat, uh, am I washing off the paint and should I not be doing that? And, and, and the follow up to that is when they pressure wash it when it comes out, are they washing off all the paint and then do I have to automatically re it? So in your case, it's a more of a convoluted answer. Um, for hard paints, I'd say no, no concern. Yep. For hydrocoat, it's a softer ablative. Any ablative paint, you don't want to scrub it very aggressively because right. you're going to actively remove anything that's there. Yeah. Uh, throughout the season, if you want to get rid of that scum line, I'd use a soft bristle brush. Uh -huh, it would okay. be very gentle. Try not to remove too much of it. Okay. Um, when you haul out in the fall, mm -hmm. hydrocoat is actually designed to be pressure washed and reapplied. Oh, it is. So if you wanted to be as lazy, you could just have the boatyard pressure wash it, lightly rough it up, and then put a new coat on. You don't have to sand and bring out the orbital sander if you don't oh. Oh, want to. Okay, all right. Um, we tried to make that one as simple as That's possible good to know. for you. Yeah, great. Well, Tucker, it's hard to believe, but it's time to wrap up the show today. And we've really covered a lot of ground on the coatings and epoxies and adhesives. Um, it's a lot of interesting products out there and a greater variety than ever before. Is there anything you'd like to share before we wrap up the show today? Well, first off, I want to thank you for having me out here again today, Paul. I really yeah. appreciate it. Um, and I just recommend all you guys watching to. Um, Check out all the brands in the marine industry. They're always developing new innovative products that make your life easier, uh, perform better. You never know what you're going to find. I know some of us get set in our ways, so there's always might be another better option out there for you guys to try. So thank yeah. you again. I appreciate it. Yeah. Do if, if someone has questions, is there a, a, a way that they can reach your company? Do you have technical support? Available? Yeah. So we we have all of our contact info online at PettitPaint.com. You reach out to our technical representative, or they'll send you to us directly. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions you guys might have, or talk you through any of the projects you're working on. Super. Well, thank you. Thank you, Paul. And thank you, Smart Boating viewers, for joining us. If you have any comments or questions, please uh, connect with us at www.smartboatingus.com. Thank you.